Cambridge Council meeting for June 11, 2019. Come to order. Roll call, please. Mr. Caffarelli. Here. Mrs. Calderelli. Present. Mr. Dunn. Present. Mr. Flannery. Present. Mr. McCoy. Mrs. Miller. Here. Mr. McCoolidge. Here. Mayor Jernowski. Here. Chief Ramudis. Here. Chief Goschalk. Here. Solicitor Stark. Present. Engineer Sear. Engineer has a family issue and uh, Duke McCoy is uh, out of town. We all stand for benediction and uh, pledge of allegiance. <laughs> The Old Testament prophet Jeremiah told the people of God to seek the welfare of the city. And so tonight we ask, O oh Lord, that we all may serve, may seek the welfare of Ambridge, whether we are decision makers in government, business or property owners, or just people who love this place where we live. Give special wisdom tonight to the members of this council as they deliberate for the good of your people. And we ask it in the name of him who makes all things. Amen. <coughs> We had the uh, executive session pertaining to real estate, legal matters, and uh, contract and personnel. Public portion. Anybody wish to speak? Come forward. Side in, please. Mr. Kovach, I already signed in. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Nick Diamantis. Lived in the stop for 64 years, 43 on Locust Street. And I've seen, uh, I have complaining about 224 and 226 Logan Street. Overgrown vegetation, the houses are dilapidated, and as of an hour ago before I came, it's still the same. I've seen the code officers up there three, four times, which leads me to think that the owners of both of those properties are an evasive action. Either that or they're thumbing their nose at us. When I first moved up on that street, it was a wonderful street. Now, with these slumlords coming in, turning our street into a garbage can, I'm getting older. I'm having myself health issues, and these properties are, are something to really speak about, and none of you would want none of these homes in, next to you. And the biggest culprit, I hate to say it, is because I've been living there in the last 32 years that 226 has been rented out. But for the longest time, Valley Realty has been owning that house. And what they've been doing is people come in, people go out, and nothing's being done to that property. All they were doing was making 100% profit and if their code enforcement officers were checking that property, they were blind, which leads to me to say one thing. They evaded our council. Because now you've got weeds on tree lines everywhere. Now they're 30, 40, 50 foot trees. I, and, and when everybody complained in, the next day, like, like it's a miracle. Valerie really shows up, the old guy with the glasses, the young guy, and mows around the sides and the front. He leaves the back. The weeds are already this high. This is only June. Way to August. They'll be touching the ceiling. Now, I mean, nobody would want to live in a, in a have anything like that next to them. All right? Now, 224 has been abandoned for 35 years or more. And the electrical meter on the outside is covered with ivy. And if anything would ever happen, because there is some tree growth back there, that's going to take out that whole block. And there's one tree in particular that I'm afraid of, and it's in back of 226 Locust Street, which belongs to Valley Realty. It's a 60-foot pine tree. 
and every year it's leaning more and more and more. It's sitting right at this angle like this now. One day, if it doesn't kill me or my wife while we're sleeping, it's going to kill somebody else that's going to be in that house. Because that whole street, if not, not that whole hillside, is moving towards Virgin Street. Okay? And I hate to see our government officials getting buffaloed out of, of taxation money. I mean, 125 bucks to get your house uh, inspected. There's a, I don't know what his last name is. His name's Larry. He has a bunch of houses in Ambridge. He had a code enforcement officer up and check this whole place out. Not once on 226 at all. And they were continuing every two years. People come in, people go out, and not one code enforcement officer. So somewhere along the line, something to me doesn't seem right. Okay, we have a, Mr. Cowley? Uh, yeah. I could update you. Uh, 222, the property with the high grass, uh, there has been multiple code enforcement correspondence back and forth with that property owner. Like, like it's obvious, they didn't do anything. The property was cited for the property maintenance issues on June 6th. It's on the public works list to cut the grass, and then a lien will be filed for the public works maintenance. Regarding 224, the firefighters have been in contact with Valley Realty. Like you said, the property has been rental property and with rather transient occupants. Right now it is vacant and it is for sale. They have multiple phone messages in the Valley Realty to set up the point of sale inspection that would be done before that property transfers. When that inspection is done, the property will be brought up to code and made safe for the new office. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, I've walked around that property many times, and it still has wooden windows. The spackling is all knocked out of it. The windows are rotting away. The back porch is rotting away. Uh, uh, the front porch is rotting away, and if the outside is any indication of the inside, there is no way. If that house sold for $15,000, which they would probably be glad to unload it, you're going to have to sink 40000 in it. So somebody that would buy that house would have to be a total fool. Okay. Well, we'll have the... Uh Code enforcement, take care of it again too, also, please. Yes, I will have. Thank uh, you very thank much. Thank you. As, as Mr. Cower explained, uh, and I believe somebody at the last council meeting was complaining about those properties also, there is a citation in place uh, <coughs> for, I believe, 226 Locust with the high grass and everything else like that. It was a 222. 222, two, two, two. yes. So uh, there is. Uh, and the code enforcement officers have been up there and investigating the property. So uh, there has been contact with the owners and numerous messages left with them that I know. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Get back to our regular order of business. Approval of the minutes of May 14th, 2019. So moved. Second. Mrs. Calderelli. Second by Mr. Dunn. Any corrections or additions to the minutes? Roll call, please. Mr. Caffarelli? Yes. Mrs. Caldarelli? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Flannery? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. McCulloch? Yes. Approval of paid bills and expenses unpaid $137,313.08. Paid $137,655.28. So moved. Mr. Flannery? Second. Mr. Dunn? Any questions at all on the bills or expenses? Roll call, please. Mr. Caffarelli? Yes. Mrs. Caldarelli? Yes. Mr. Don? Yes. Mr. Flannery? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. McCulloch? Yes. On the consent agenda, items one through seven, any questions on any of those items? Do I have a motion to accept? I Mrs. Miller, second by Mr. Flannery. Roll call, please. Mr. Caffarelli? Um, yes. Mrs. Caldarelli? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Flannery? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. McCoolidge? Yes. The reason I hesitated, Mike, you don't mind. No, go ahead. Um, 
the resignation of Karen, but uh, as a school crossing guard, I thought there should have been a separate motion. But. Yeah, we're going to send her a letter of uh, recognition. We're going, to, we're going to recognize her next uh, month's meeting, uh, Tom. Okay. Just like we always do with other crossing guards and everything yeah. for her service and dedication to the borough and school district. Good, good point, though. Tony. Thank you. New business A, consider action to approve the Franklinwood Sloan Consolidation Plan of 933 Glenwood Avenue <coughs> for a recommendation of our engineer to Ambridge Planning Commission contingent upon application satisfactory any requirements from the Beaver County Planning Commission. So moved. Mr. Flannery. I'll second that. Mr. Caffrelli. Any questions at all on the motion? I did attend, Mr. President, I'm sorry. Uh, I did ahead, attend the, the meeting um, and everything seemed to go well with the uh, planning, so that's why I made that motion. Okay, good, great. <coughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Roll call, please. Mr. Caffarelli? Yes. Mrs. Colarelli? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Flannery? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. McCulloch? Yes. Consider action to adopt resolution number 2019-4, a resolution of the Borough of Ambert supporting the governor's proposal to restore Pennsylvania program a $4.5 billion infrastructure improvement plan. Want to evaluate or could, uh, touch on that, Mr. Carver, a little bit? Uh, there was a request from uh, the Beaver County COG uh, to each governing body seeking uh, each council to support a resolution that would be sent to your state rep and senator to help them back up the governor's plan for this restore PA program. Uh, he's been basically hitting around a lot of stops around the area. He was in Hopewell, I believe, not that long ago to address some of the flooding concerns up there. Uh, this new funding stream uh, is aimed at infrastructure and flooding issues. It's $4.5 billion. You can't have to do something to support that kind of a program. So that's why we're passing this resolution. So moved. Mr. Flannery. Second. Mrs. Calderelli, any questions on the motion? Roll call, please. Mr. Caffarelli? Yes. Mrs. Calderelli? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Flannery? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. McCulloch? Yes. Consider action to approve change order number four for the Merchant Street project, streetscape project, in the amount of $15,682. <coughs> change orders to address void uh, funds underneath the sidewalk in the phase three areas. So moved. Second. Mr. Flannery, second by Mrs. Miller. Any question on the motion? Roll call, please. Mr. Caffarelli? Yes. Mrs. Calderelli? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Flannery? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. McCulloch? Yes. Consider action to ratify a payment made to Miami Construction in the amount of $123,499.12 for the payment in eight of the Burton Street Streetscape project. So moved. <coughs> Mr. Caffarelli, second by Mr. Dunn. Any question on the motion? Roll call, please. Mr. Caffarelli? Yes. Mrs. Caldarelli? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Flannery? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. McCulloch? Yes. Consider action to approve payment in the amount of $148,686.31 to Biamo Construction to Payment Request Number 9 of the Martin Street, Street uh, Streetscape Project. So moved. Mr. Flannery. I'll second Mr. Flannery's motion. Mr. Caffarelli. Any questions on a motion? <coughs> Call, please. Mr. Caffarelli? Yes. Mrs. Calderelli? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Flannery? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. McCulloch? Yes. Uh, these last three uh, motions were just uh, on schedule type payments to uh, the Army Construction for the Streetscape Project. Consider action to authorize the advertisement of a request proposal for towing, impoundment, disposal, abandoned, and junk vehicles as recommended by the Public Safety Committee. So moved. Second. Mr. Flannery. Second by Mrs. Calderelli. Any questions on the motion? Roll call, please. 
Mr. Caffarelli? Yes. Mrs. Caffarelli? Yes. Mr. Don? Yes. Mr. Flannery? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. McCulloch? Yes. Consider <laughs> action to transfer 2018 journal fund surplus of $65,771 from the general fund to the sinking fund to be used for future capital projects. So moved. Mr. Dunn? Second. Mrs. Calderelli? Any questions on that motion? Yeah, that general fund, um, that movement, you're going to pull that out of one, that's coming out of one account, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, the general fund overall last year performed better than expected. It had a surplus of around $99,000. That's my point. Of that 99000 we used roughly 25000 ish and that paid for the HVAC upgrades on the building this year. Okay. Uh, the remaining surplus now that we're at tax season and the general fund solvent and carrying you know, operations okay, we're transferring that to capital funds <coughs> you know, to pay for future uh, capital work. And we did the same exercise last year. Okay. I like the word surplus. <laughs> Yeah, we did remarkably better than what we anticipated last right, year. Right, right. We did our I just didn't want moving something that, hey, we we're going to lose money. <coughs> I just, you know. We did our job last year, uh, Mr. Oh, yeah. Early. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Caffarelli? Yes. Mrs. Calderelli? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Flannery? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. McCulloch? Yes. Code Committee? Nothing to report. Public Safety? Uh, really nothing to report. We met with staff and the mayor. Um, I was the only one able to do from council. And we continued talks about the fireworks um, and things that we can follow up to see what's going on and the way programs will be uh, administered and allowed by law. Um, talked about the fire department and I forgot my notes, so I'm sorry. <coughs> I forgot my notes, you guys can yell at me. Um, we talked about uh, the fire department, police department sharing resources and on pre-plans, and they kind of work together and we'll work that out. Is there anything I'm forgetting, guys? I know I did, I apologize. <laughs> Anybody else on their public safety? Mr. President, could the police chief give a brief on his report to the public? It take about 30 seconds on our public safety. Sure. Uh, we are, uh, we had uh, a ticket, uh, click and ticket program. So uh, uh, Ambridge officers were out. We, we wrote a lot of citations in the last month. It continued in June, so I don't have a code on it yet, but uh, uh, they were out there uh, very aggressively with uh, uh, traffic safety campaigns. Having a seatbelt on is a secondary violation. So if I see someone driving without a seatbelt on, I cannot pull them over for that. They have to commit some other traffic violation before we can do it. So um, they did write a lot of citations on that. Um, a couple of really nice drug busts. We uh, were able to interdict a, a car coming back from uh, coming up here from Pittsburgh, uh, stopped it, and we got the three bricks of heroin out of that. Uh, that's 150 stamp bags, that's 150 doses of heroin that we were able to get out of that. We had another good one. You might have seen it on uh, TV. Uh, somebody was actually mailing marijuana from uh, California back to their house here in Ambridge. And uh, we were able to, to inter interdict that with the uh, Attorney General, our officers, Postal Police, and uh, we got uh, uh, four pounds of marijuana out of there, uh, some crack cocaine, a gun, uh, a lot of other um, THC, uh, marijuana edibles, and things like that. Uh, so uh, it was a, it was a good month for that. Uh, it, it continues though. Um, one other thing, um, I'd like to thank Mrs. Calderelli. I actually used one of your teddy bears last week. Oh. We had a, a little road rage incident out here, and um, I guess each side believed they were in the right, and there was a lot of yelling back and forth. They all pulled into the police station. The yelling continued back and forth. Uh, we heard it from inside when we were running out. We kind of sorted things out there, but there was a little five-year-old boy. Uh, he was in his car seat in the back, and I mean, he's you know having your dad yell and being yelled at, et cetera, et cetera. And his his eyes were like saucers, so we ran in, grabbed a little brown teddy bear, took it out to him, and kind of changed his whole attitude. Oh, that's right there. So yeah, it worked worked fine, real good. <coughs> I'm so glad. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to say anything? No. Okay, good. Pretty much. Yeah, you guys do just as much work. Just, you know, you guys do a heck of a job, too. Thank you. Uh, anything else under public safety? Public works? Thank you, Mr. McCullough. Um, Department of Public Works, um, in the monthly report for June. Uh, street sweeping is underway every other week and increased at the French Point Creek watershed area. Uh, grass cutting is underway at borough, borough properties, the parks, right of ways, and abandoned properties. Uh, our electrician is working on uh, electric service and lights at 8th Street Park and Pavilion. Uh, also relocated the 14th Street traffic signal on the new utility pole installed by Verizon. Uh, the crew repaired uh, storm sewer and installed new catch basin on 5th Street uh, between Pine and Wilson. I went up there. Um, that was their first one. They did a, uh, they did a good job. Uh, really, I was impressed. I'm glad. Uh, streetscape project. Uh, the crew has been installing benches and trash cans in the finished project areas. As far as the street, uh, the shade tree maintenance contract to complete borough work, including stump grinding in partnership with Duquesne Light, the nine trees on the south side of 13 and 14th Street uh, in an historic district have been removed uh, at their expense and they provided the borough with $975 <coughs> vouchers to purchase new trees for those areas that will not interfere with electric lines in the future. In partnership with the Shade Tree Commission, the borough will plant those trees replacements uh, in the fall. Crew also mulched all tree pits around the new trees uh, that were planted in the historic district on May 22nd. Uh, our crew continues to hang military troop banners uh, and decorated PJ Call Park and Merchant Street in the midtown of Memorial Day activities, which they look nice. I really like them banners. You know, Mike, they really... Yeah, they do. Show sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as far as equipment maintenance, uh, remove, remove snow plows and salt solders from our trucks, put them away for the summer, uh, assisted the fire department and strike the lettering off the new squad car re received from uh, the Baden, Baden police. The uh, red F550 dump truck, uh, repairs were made uh, on the salter controls and the snow plow. The red five ton uh, dump truck at Zarin's right now for inspection needs uh, an exhaust and body work to pass inspection. Uh, sign maintenance is ongoing, replacing missing signs and repair damage lo at damage locations. Ongoing maintenance has been dedicated to filling potholes and repairs to multiple alleys. And finally, the former responded and marked and reported all multiple PA one call requests. That's all I have for the June report, Mr. McCoy. Very good report. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody on it? Anybody else on that? Uh, yeah, I have a comment. You said they're filling potholes because I noticed there's yeah. a lot, a lot, a lot of potholes that need filled. Yes, they're. And I was with uh, Ted the other day. He says we're we're going. He goes we're we're just really swamped. Mm -hmm. He goes we're doing the best we can. Yeah. <coughs> we're, we're we're short one guy, right? That's who. Yeah, Jimmy. Yeah. yeah, we have one guy off on yeah. sick leave, so. That's why they will be and, I, and we're not getting summer help like we did last no. year either, are we? He asked yeah. job training uh, will be able to supply us one guy starting probably the end of this month, but not like last year now. I know. So that's going to hurt a little bit. Yeah. A lot of work in the summertime. But they're doing a hell of a job, though. Yeah, they're they're moving. Yep. They don't sit still. No, they don't. They don't watch the, uh, they don't watch the paint dry daily. Thank that's that. for sure. Great guys. Thank you, Mr. Caffarelli. Thank you. Um, just to let everybody know, down on Merchant Street, I don't know if you noticed, but the benches have been put in there, some garbage cans have been put in there, trees have been planted. Uh, I think some trees are not going to be planted because they're on back order, is that correct? Correct. Uh, there's about 35, uh, I believe they're ginkgos or Zalcova trees that were on back order that won't be in until the fall. Uh, the design guys were trying to work out a, a compromise of a, a substitute tree so we didn't have to wait. So that, that's still up in the air. Okay. But just so everybody knows that the, 
you can see some empty spots where trees would normally go because they're on back order. And if we can't get a substitute, then we're going to have to wait till around September to get those to get those in. The other thing, the street closure on Ford Street will be this coming Monday, the 17th, for the week. Uh, so that'll be the second street closure. The third street closure is a tentative date for July 8th of that week. Uh, that would be in, on the 700 block of uh, 700 block, yeah, 700 block of March Street. Then that would complete the three street closures and uh, that project in this transferring electricity from one side to the other will be completed plus some other little work that they have done. But to give you an idea of what it looks like, it's already done in the 500 block. Uh, if you notice, uh, it's a handicap accessible type thing. It's uh, all over the, the country, those type of things. <coughs> Streets, malls, hospitals, buildings, you name it, they have it all like that. To where it's all unison, nobody has to step down or go to a corner to uh, use a handicap ramp. They have it right there in the middle of the street. Plus it's a park a lot and so on, so it's, it's uh, convenient that way. Parks and Recreation. I have nothing to report. My committee will meet at the end of the month. Um, the only thing that Mr. Cowder would like to elaborate on the water fountain, if you have Yeah, uh, the Lions Club raised uh, a considerable amount of money to purchase uh, a Lions-style water fountain like you see at Zeely Noble. Uh, they ordered it. it it's to be shipped to Ambridge, rather, it's on its way. Uh, we're working with the Water Authority to put a, a new line into A Street Park so it would be down by all the new playground equipment and the new pavilion. Uh, the Water Authority is working with the borough uh, staff to do it in-house so all the water line work will be done in, in conjunction with the public works and the water crew. So hopefully we'll have it in by the end of summer when it comes. And it should be a nice addition to that playground. Any other things on the park and recreation? Uh, the engineer is in here. Do we have anything uh, pending from the engineer's standpoint? Okay. Anybody have anything on the engineer's? Any comments on that? On his report? Do I have a motion to accept all the official reports? So moved. Second. Mr. Flannery, second by Mr. Miller. Any questions on any of the reports? Roll call, please. Mr. Caffarelli? Yes. Mrs. Colarelli? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Flannery? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. McCoolidge? Yes. On uh, June 29th is the fireworks up at Borough Park. Uh, we have a car cruise. No, the movies in the park starts on the 20th. Is that right, uh, Moran? Yes, it is uh, next week. Okay, that'll be at the PJ Call Park starting at dusk. And then the uh, farmer's market on Park Road uh, starts uh, on Thursday afternoons. Yeah. If there's nothing else, I have a motion to adjourn. So I, have, I have a question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, in our packet, um, there's a letter just the borough about S Avenue Cafe about closing 19th Street. Mm -hmm. um, Pretty self-explanatory. I, I just he never really stated a reason why or what for what use is it. If you go to the consent agenda item three, it's for their uh, motorcycle, like the car for for motorcycle. Okay, that's going to go all the way into October. October twenty-fifth. They did that last year. Six to nine. nine. Yeah. Okay. It seemed like last year there was no issues. It was rather smooth. It just, okay. Do we uh, we have. Put in forms of as a motion. We already did that. Right right now. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, no problem. No problem. Okay. Okay, hey guys. No problem. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So, Mr. Flannery. I'll second Mr. Mr. Flannery's motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. 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 Aye.